Feeding your fish is not the simplest thing in the world. It includes considerations such as what is the current growth rate of the fish? In other words, is it young and growing into maturity? Or is it an older fish that is not growing at all or growing very slowly? What is the season of the fish? And by season, I don't mean like the weather. I mean, is it preparing to spawn? Does it need special nutrition in order for the females to egg up and for the male sperm to build up? The other consideration is what is the current level of activity of the fish? Are you preparing your fish to breed them? Or are they living in a community aquarium where they really don't require very much in the way of nutrition. Let's take a look at a few of these things. Well, hello. Come right on in. You're at Father Fish. Babies, when they hatch, must gorge. They must eat continuously because they have no reserves. They have no body fat. If they don't eat, they die. A baby fish, if it doesn't eat, some of them for as short as a few hours will die without food. Others can live a little longer, a day or so, but rarely more than that if it's a new baby fish. When parents, or would-be parents, uh, the would-be spawners of these baby fish are wanting to spawn, their spawning is triggered by the availability of an abundance of food. So if you want to get your fish spawning, you feed them an abundance of food. Now obviously, doing that, there are real considerations involving the condition of the environment that you're feeding them in. You've got to be able to keep it from fouling. There are a number of ways to do that. I'm not going to get into that in this video because I want to focus purely on food. A fish that is going to spawn needs to be well fed and it needs to be well fed not just more flake food, but the kind of food that's going to allow it to build up its egg production or its sperm production. That means a high protein food. The high protein foods run about 50%. Now the very best kind of high protein food you can feed is live food. So that's a major consideration. When you're feeding your fish, are you in a position to be able to raise culture such as Daphne culture, brine shrimp culture, paramecium, black worm, mosquito larvae, white worm, micro worm, any number of different critters that are available to culture and all of them provide a quality food for your fish. Now there's another matter that fits right here at this spot, and that is to disabuse you of the notion that diversity of food is a good thing. It is not. In the wild, fish do not feed on a wide variety of food. Typically, they will feed on the same thing, especially if they are in their breeding season, because that also means that there is a population of insects, typically, or vegetable matter if it's not insects, that are available at just that point in time. And the insect larvae will be the hatching of mayflies. It'll be crickets. It'll be something that is exploding in the water column. And if you watched my last video, you would know why I said crickets. That will explode in the water column 
and provide an abundance of food, and it will be the same kind of food. Fish are not used to having cornflakes for breakfast and lunch meat for lunch and fried chicken for dinner. They're used to eating the same thing all day long for days and weeks on end, such that if something new appears and there's plenty of what they've been eating available, they will ignore it. It may eat it, but it's going to take a little while. But fish do not look for a variety of food in their diet. They look for something, one thing, that is plentiful, that they can depend on, and they simply gorge on it. Clearly, live foods are better than prepared foods. For one thing, they're alive, they're not dead. They don't begin rotting, deteriorating the instant they hit the water. So if you have not learned how to culture certain kinds of insects, worms, nematodes for your fish, you need to learn to do so because it will provide the very best quality food for your fish. If you must use a prepared food, then don't buy a cheap can of food off the shelf. It contains primarily cornmeal, which is indigestible. In other words, it's full of filler, and filler has no value to the fish. You want something that's high quality, that may be more expensive to buy, but that will serve your needs and the needs of your fish better. So get a high quality food. I have a few available that I sell in small portions through the father.fish web store. With your community tank, you want to feed absolute minimum. And that means you do not feed every day. You feed twice a week, at most three times a week. And you put only as much in as will be cleaned up immediately. You should never have food laying on the bottom of the tank. That's a sign you've overfed. A fish that is in community, that's full grown, will grow very, very slowly. And unless you are convinced you want to grow a max out and get them as big as you can, you need to feed a very tiny amount of food just enough to keep them healthy and happy. And that doesn't require much. Fish have a very, very low metabolism. They can reduce their metabolism to nearly zero. So don't be worried that they're hungry. Oh, they'll get in the habit of teaching you, controlling you, and training you to feed them because it's a high form of entertainment. But they don't need it, and you don't need to be doing it. It's not good for the fish, it's not good for the tank, and ultimately it's not good for you because you're not going to be able to enjoy watching their natural behavior. So, the other concern is the grade of the food, the size of the food. For baby fish, you want a very, very tiny powder something that's down around one micron, really, really tiny. And that goes for live food as well. Live food for baby fish needs to be a microorganism, something very, very tiny. As they get bigger, they can take larger food. Many baby fish cannot eat baby brine shrimp. They're too big. They can't even eat the decapsulated eggs. They're too big. You need a much tinier food. That's especially true of fish like bettas, of tetras. Not so much live bears. They're born bigger and they can eat a, a, a larger food. Very good. Hope this helps. Talk to you again very soon. Be sure to stop over at Discord and chat with some of the folks there. We've got lots more information along these lines. Do visit father.fish 
Her website is amazing, and we have amazing things in there, including a, a micro food web that you can purchase or learn how to create yourself in order to be able to have a continuing supply of living microscopic food in your tank. Take care and bye for now.